Ball, Mr. and Mrs. Pearson. We're going to kind of give you an overview of the factory the trailer. This is Blue Shop Dog. Kristen is behind the camera shooting. I'll try to flip it around so she can say hello. My name is Michael Lish. I've been in the industry for about 32 years manufacturing, first of all things, mono skis, and then from mono skis to snowboards, really built in to that industry. Traveled all over the world building large size facilities. And then more recently, about eight years ago, got into manufacturing or developed a manufacturing platform for off grid, fully custom skis. So, this is this latest incarnation. So, let's kind of move you through. The, um, we're not going to show you outside, it's a little bit windy, but all the steel superstructure that creates the trailer itself is uh, fresh steel, stuff that we purchased from the market. But the rest of the uh, trailer is found material, reused material, things that were given to us, um, like some of this beautiful wood, the paneling, it's everywhere. It's a wonderful maple. Uh, we've incorporated a lot of found materials. People are pretty excited to give us stuff. We do need stuff with it to create a, kind of an aesthetic, also a function and really a, a good sense of work. You know, having a nice place, good lighting, comfortable, is kind of key to, to producing really innovative stuff consistently. This is our kitchen. Um, it's pretty well equipped. Kristen, her background is culinary. Before she started with me, uh, she spent a lot of times in commercial kitchens or, or commercial restaurants. So we'll be eating pretty good. That's a nice thing to know. It, it really makes a day go by well. So coming through here, um, it's not a big factor right now, but the, the whole trailer is double wall insulated. So all the glass is double wall, all the floor, all the wall, all the lids. So we can work to, and forgive me, we talk in Fahrenheit here in the States, we can work to about uh, maybe 20, 20 degrees below freezing and we can still be a viable platform. Okay, so moving back into the factory itself. <clears throat> One of the projects that we'll be working on or continuing is we're building another factory and these are a lot of the parts that go into the tooling package and I'll kind of give you a brief sense of what these things are for. It's a considerable upgrade to what we're currently using and that's one of the nice things as you, you know, my career has evolved where you'll come in with a concept and over the years you can refine that concept. But the concepts, how we design, how we build, what's important to us, our approach to manufacturing really is about hand-eye. It's just about this world right here. Obviously the whole body is key, how you think, how you work, how you develop your craftsmanship. So there's no automation in the shop. There's we, We're heavily based in computers in regards to running the business, supply chain management, things like that. And we have some sophisticated design software that we've built from in-house. But the work that we really have, have valued and treasured is not CNC based, it's not CAD based. Um, all of our designs, mine in particular, I'll be, you know, I'll come up with a concept and I'll spend all the time in my head visualizing and constructing it, rotating and stressing it, seeing where it'll fail, and then designing it uh, and then building it organically. So it's just the way I've approached work and it's, you know, for this kind of environment, it works pretty well. So moving along from one of the projects we'll be building is a new factory for a high school. So it's the first ever in the United States, it could be possibly the first ever in the world, the first high school program that allows the students to design skis, complex high performance skis, and also build those skis, two sets. The program also encompasses snowboards and split snowboards, backcountry access snowboards. Um, so real quick, one of the modifications that we went to is we've gone through an illuminated block that's more of an aesthetic, but it was material on hand. And then the slide rods, we went to polyethylene. So these rods slide and they lock, okay? They're push-pull rods. Um, and what we've changed that from is my initial, well, actually, this is a, probably a third generation design. We went from round aluminum stock, round square stock, and these, I'm gonna go ahead and move this. This was actually the shape of the last ski we built. So. Um, kind of jumping around a little bit, those are significantly upgraded from these because they're self-cleaning and they slide much, they self-lubricate so they can stay consistent in their slide resistance which gives you much more accuracy. So there's about six significant upgrades in the new platform, the new tooling package for the high school which we will be reverse adopting back to this platform. So we'll be making those parts and pieces that are upgraded for the high school, but also replacing a lot of what we currently have. And as I said, that's about six really critical points in the manufacturing process. We've had these upgrades that we've been able to design. 
So, I, I didn't mean to overstress keeping the shop clean. It's key, obviously it's small, but um, you know, sometimes people, you know, you'll see us adjusting things to be straight, vertical, and perpendicular. We're in a mobile factory, and safety is key. I mean, if we're out in the field, that means the forest, or out in the desert, and we have an injury, it could take a long time. So we're doing everything we can to avoid injury. And one of that is re replacement. You know, as you're using your tools, they go back to where they belong. But key to that is to see if anything is shifted. If we lose a 90 and it shifts, we know that that bracket or that uh, tool is now in an unstable scenario. We'll redesign the bracketing and make sure that we don't have a failure so a tool drops perhaps. So we're really key on lining things up because we can visually scan the shop and see, oh, that's crooked, therefore we know that it's been degraded, something is wrong. Another wonderful thing about this shop, <coughs> one of the driving kind of key uh, philosophies, and there's there's probably several key points, is is uh, basic degradation. So you have tooling degradation. As you use a tool, it degrades, therefore you lose tolerance. And you also have environmental degradation. So as you produce, the environment itself degrades. It becomes less, uh, um, probably, it becomes trashy. You know, just things are all over the place. You're walking over, potential stumbling. You drop something, it picks up debris. So as this shop works, it self-cleans in essence. It, it's, you know, as you work, it's inevitable that you're going to clean up that sector so it stays as good and as fresh as it did. Um, it's like a kitchen in that sense. Obviously, you don't leave everything out for the next day. Everything goes back and everything cleans up so you don't have product cross-contamination. Um, We'll talk about obviously all this stuff, how it works, why it works the way it does. But keep in mind, this is uh, there's two things that happen at the cutting edge in this factory. One is, well actually there's three. Our approach to manufacturing, the philosophical driving points that have gotten us to this point are very unusual to manufacturing. How we've approached design, the actual envelope, the environment that we work in, off-grid, solar-powered, uh, completely unique. One of the things though that's key to that is this factory makes itself. In other words, to make another factory, everything in here is the same things that we're using to make the skis also makes the factory itself. So <clears throat> rather than outsourcing, you know, sending it off to somebody else, we can basically build what we need to to create a new factory from within itself. And we did that for budgetary reasons. We really wanted this platform to dominate the world. We think that this is a better platform for manufacturing. We think local regional manufacturing that supplies a regional area as opposed to shipping in stuff, moving across and all that kind of stuff. We thought that we would be more effective in the market and inevitably the market would receive a much better product if in fact um, these shops were everywhere as opposed to Central getting bigger and then dissipating and shipping all over the world. We should have one in France. Um, we really thought hard about Chamonix. Um, we, we should have two in Japan perhaps, one in Australia, uh, obviously one in Canada, several throughout the United States, so on and so forth. So again, one of the philosophical driving points is education. That's why we have the high school program to create potentially the next generation of ski smiths, people that will be able to build their own factories and then set them up in a local regional area and then become you know, market, market strong or successful businesses, one or the other. Um, Let's see, I uh, can't really think of anything else. I did want to touch base on some of the um, kind of the materials uh, uh, approaches that we're going to be taking while you're here. We're going to, we're constantly looking at new materials to integrate, but it's not exotic, expensive, new, no, we're not concerned about that. What really drives our material selection is supply chain. How easy is it to bring into our supply chain so we can get it delivered on time and it stays reasonable in the price point? Okay, so we're not really excited about exotic materials as we are about using common materials in a very unusual way to create really exceptional outcomes. Um, so one of the things that we're going to be working on is our current core stock is a 9-ply Baltic birch. It comes out of the cabinet industry. Um, it's readily available and it's very inexpensive and it's superior to what the industry uses as its standard. I created that industry probably 35 years ago for the snowboard industry. It's called vertical laminate poplar spruce, vertical laminate core stock. We've gone to horizontal which gives us more torsional strength, more twisting strength. And it has the huge advantage of being readily available. We're going to be looking at modifications to this core. 
Um, another thing we're going to be looking at is lacing. <clears throat> I can't really go too, too far into it, but it's actually not a material usage. It's just basically um, a process of lacing with Kevlar string the edge stock together so the potential for blowout is minimized. We're going to be looking at heavy reinforcements underfoot to, uh, to sustain some of the abuse that goes on in park skiing. We're going to be looking at using different layering of more common fiberglasses to see if we can, um, again, develop more torsional or contrary to twisting strengths so using our traditional stocks. We're going to be looking at top skins um, that we aren't, have, aren't currently using. So we'll be using test profiles. You'll be building a lot of sample sets and then we'll go through process degradation and look at also finish degradation and see can we get something within our current train of materials that gives us a better finish, a top side finish. There's probably about seven or eight of those things. I can't recall them offhand. That's a lot of the stuff that you'll be working with. And of course, carbon. We want to get a lot more sample sets with our carbon, uh, seeing if we can't um, increase the fluid rate, the ability for us to use carbon, to drape carbon in the manufacturing process, and also trying to understand a little bit more in depth on how we can, because it's so much stronger, decrease some of the weight elsewhere and obviously keep the ski viable as a strong, you know, durable product. Um, that kind of spin us around. Yeah, gosh, you know, I think that's about it. I just wanted to say hello, introduce the shop, kind of give an overview of what we might be doing. Uh, we might shoot one more video before you come in regards to being out back camping. I, I think it might sound pretty complex as we write letters back and forth, but it, it's very simple. When you arrive here, you're going to be comfortable, we're going to be focused, we have a really long work day, we're going to be fed really well, we're going to stay really focused, we're going to have a great time building the next factory. We'll be doing a lot of sample tests um, and then looking at them and, and actually learning also how to test them to see if not just making it, how do we make sure that it's translatable into our, our finished product and process. Um, and that's about it. Thanks. I'm going to hand this to you. Oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this slowly. Got it? Yeah. Hi there, I'm Kristen, and uh, I'll be working with you um, particularly when you were doing the glassing wet lay process of the ski. So that's the actual layup of the ski. So I'll be taking you through that and, and guiding you through that whole process. The other thing I'll be um, talking with you about when you first get here is business side of things, um, the design software. How do we actually design a set of skis before we even start building it? How do we design the graphics for that ski, uh, marketing, social media, all that sort of stuff. So I'll go over all that stuff with you when you get here. And if there's anything that you seem to really take an interest to, I'm happy to explore that to a much uh, deeper level with you. Uh, so look forward to meeting you and speaking some French maybe together. I'd love to learn a little and doing some cooking. Ciao.